Radio News, your host of Black Trending. I'm right here in the hotel lobby with gospel rap artists right here in the Alamo City, Mr. Jason. How you doing, sir? Doing well, man. Pleasure, man. Thanks for having me. Man, thank you for even allowing me to talk to you. I know your new album just dropped, No Filter. Yep. You're going to be performing uh, this weekend, actually tomorrow night at Now Word Covenant Church. Uh -huh. You're going to be laying it down. Are you going to be doing some of them new tracks over there? Oh, absolutely. It's the No Filter concert series, so we've been hitting the road every weekend, man. Um, last weekend, we was in my hometown in St. Louis. We hit Indianapolis, Marion, so... All new music, that's what you're going to get at the concert, man. Man, that's awesome. And for our viewers, yes, he is from North St. Louis. Uh, he's a St. Louis uh, native. Uh, you've been pretty consistent, man, and very consistent when I talk about your legacy and what you're leaving with your music. Um, I know your first album dropped in 05. Here it is, 2015, man, your sixth album, man. How does it feel to be so consistent with your music, sir? I mean, it's encouraging, man. Man, it's just a testament to the Lord and His grace. You know what I mean? I've seen people come and people go. I've seen people come and nothing crack off. I've seen people surpass what it is I do. Um, so I'm just thankful to be able to do what I do and do it for His, his honor and glory, man. That's awesome. And that's one of the things I wanted to touch on for our viewers uh, that are going to be logging on, checking out Jay Sun right here in the Alamo City. Um, you live in St. Louis. We know there's a lot of talent there when we talk about Nelly, St. Lunatics. How do you stay consistent in staying in gospel rap and not flipping over to circular music when we know St. Louis, you know, how they get down in St. Louis when we talk about the talent that's there, plus R&B? Right. Well, for me, I, you know, um, so I've never been one of the dudes that's like, you have to call me anything, but I think my music speaks for what I am. I'm a Christian artist, you know what I mean? So it's not a matter of how do I not make a certain type of music. I think what's in your heart comes out in your music, comes out in your words, and comes out in what you write. So it's not like this fight, like how do I not do that? You know what I mean? Like my heart has been captured by the Lord and my music is a reflection of that, so. Yeah, that's awesome, that's awesome. And I wanted to touch on that too for that young kid or you know, the young male, the young female that's from the inner city. You know, I'm from Detroit, Michigan. Uh, what was the one thing that led you to your gift when we talk about a gospel rap artist and some of the things that God allowed to, to, to manifest in your life when we talk about the consistency with the growth in rap, gospel rap? Um, I guess for me it was just a matter of music has always been a part of my life. So hip hop gave you an opportunity to communicate your heart, your experiences, your emotions, things that you probably couldn't just talk to somebody about. So for me, it was just a matter of um, taking those experiences, uh, what I saw, went through in life, and then how the gospel impacted me as a result of that, and putting that into music. So for me, it was a matter of uh, wanting to grow with what I see, see happening in the culture. Because um, we are, even though we, I would consider myself a Christian rap artist, I still want to make music that's just as good as anybody else. You know what I mean? So we don't want to just be separate from a climate of music. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We want to be involved in the conversation. You know what I mean? So um, it's just been a matter of working on craft, working on what I do, um, and wanting to put effort into creativity, you know what I mean, and the art that I make, um, but also want to make sure that it stays Christ-centered and Christ-focused. Man, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's, that's right on point for that young kid that's trying to figure out a way that has that gift, that talent. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, I wanted to talk about, too, also, you know, from 05 to 2015, when we took Behind the Clouds is one of my favorite tracks. And when we talk about the creativity with the lyrics and the beats, is it life experiences, where your creativity comes from? Because I know a lot, quite a few of your albums, the titles of them, right, right. you know what I mean? Life to life, right. you know, is that basic life, how you write and your creativity? Yeah, so for me, music just works best when it comes from life experiences. Um, 
I think I, I heard somebody say that um, albums aren't made, they're lived. So for me, I think that's a reflection of my music. So I have to live something and then write about it. So I don't just go in and just try to make good songs. You know what I mean? I have to write from a certain place um, in life. And that's been a reflection of all my music. You know what I mean? So even if you track back to my first album, I was talking about life. I think it was more... Um, probably theological explanation in some of my earlier stuff, but you always got records from me that were about life, that was about what I was experiencing, what I was going through. And that's continued throughout my career. So if you track back from my first album to Life on Life, which was a very personal right. excuse me, project, to City Lights, which was a personal project, and as you move forward, you just can continue to see that consistency in all of my music. So I would even argue that what I do now isn't anything different than what I've always done. It's just... Um, that I've been able to find my lane and how to approach it a lot better. So I think that's kind of helped with being able to be consistent is because I'm pulling from life experiences, not just from trying to make songs. And life is always changing. It's always things happening in life. It's always experiences you're going through in life. So it allows for me to always have content to, to communicate. And that's awesome. And, and, and that's a strong, valid point, because one of the things I tell our youth is one thing is consistent in life is change. But how are you changing? Are you changing for the good? Or are you changing for the bad? So for that young kid, man, that's 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 idolizing you with your music. Um, what do you say to that, that young kid, Jason? I say that I'm just a man, so I'm jacked up like everybody else, so um, I'm not nobody to idolize, you know. Um, I do realize that I have a platform which allows me to, to be a role model, and I accept that responsibility, and I want to be faithful in that responsibility, but I always tell them that music does music gives somebody a platform, but it doesn't make the person who they are. So for me, mu if music stops tomorrow, I'm not gonna go in a corner and die. You know what I mean? Like, cause my life, I am not music. Music is something I do. You know what I mean? So I just would encourage them, like, make sure that your life isn't just music. Music is just something I do, you know what I mean? And if the Lord want me to do something else, if it's not this, my first priority is my family, my wife, my children, you know what I mean? My church home, dudes that I'm pouring into. So music is just something I do. So for me, it's not this thing I carry where it's like, oh, if I don't do music, I don't know what to do in life. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, you know, man, for, for my viewers, too, also, I would like them to know exactly your music, how they can get it. I know it's on iTunes. They can go to the store and get it. For my viewers, let them know where they can pick this, this, this No Filter new CD up. Yeah, so the new album, No Filter, came out um, on March the 10th. You can pick it up in any Christian bookstore stuff like that holler at us on lampmode.com which is the website and um, there you can pick up the album as well iTunes Amazon any of your digital outlets you can get the album as well um, but make sure y'all check it out man I'm very excited about the project and the response has been crazy well, man you heard it first man this is Jason right here in the Alamo City I'm Keith Scott. I want to thank you so much, my brother. Mad love, man. St. Louis is in the house. You heard it first. Keith Scott, Jason, Black Video News, Black Trending. Your host, baby. You got Keith Scott, Black Video News, your host of Black Trending. Yes, I'm sitting right here with S. Oh, yeah, man. all the way from London. Yes. Man, he's right here. He's going to be laying it down this weekend with Jason. It's going down right at Now Word Covenant. How you doing, sir? I'm good, man. It's good to be here. Good to be in San Antonio again. You know what I mean? Just enjoy some good Jamaican food. Now we're just, you know, getting ready for the concert tomorrow. Man, that accent for our viewers, I know the ladies probably going to be loving it with that accent. Uh, for our viewers, man, what was it like growing up in London, man? Yeah, man. So, you know, London is very different to over here. It's smaller, um, you know, culturally more diverse, I would argue. You know what I mean? Um, as a city. Um, yeah, man, I think, I think growing up there, you know, from my family background, because I'm originally from Nigeria, so even moving to London when I was like nine, and seeing things that are different, you know, from where I was coming from, I was like, "Rod, this is 
this is new, this is unique. And you know, we have the same issues that you have over here, you know, like youth, crime, and you know, people being interested in other things other than God and Jesus. Um, but for me, it was about, you know, maintaining, coming from a, from a good household and thankful for parents who loved me and, you know, brought me up in the church and just focusing on my work at school, trying to do music, you know, peer pressure, stuff like that. So normal, average teen life, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, it was just different, you know, just being exposed to different people, being exposed to different culture, being exposed to different things, you know what I mean, more than I would say some kids over here. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, and especially, um, you know, growing up in London, how often do you come to the States oh, I'm here. and lay it down here? I'm here, like, I'm here at least every year. So since, like, two, sorry, since 2011, since I was signed to Lamp Mode, I've been here every year or twice a year uh, for, like, two, three months at a time, so... How long you been with Lamp Mode now? I've been with Lamp Mode since 2011. So I got signed in 2011, released my first project. So it begins then. In 2012, I released my second project. So it continues. And by God's grace, this year, I released the final ending of that trilogy. So it ends. The trilogy is laid, it's laid down, huh? Yeah, man, definitely. That, that's awesome, man. Uh, tell us a little bit about the creativity with the trilogy, with that third project. Yeah, yeah. So actually, it never... I never intended for it to be a trilogy. Um, so at the end of So It Begins, one of my label mates says, So It Continues. And then that's why I said, okay, I'm gonna name my album So It Continues. And then now, you know, with So It Ends, I feel like I've, uh, I've come to a place where, you know, I'm comfortable now with being a Christian artist, being a Christian rapper. I'm not shy, you know, I've, I've laid some foundation on my own so I can run my own lane and run in my own race. So it's just about creating music that my fans will like and create a music that will glorify and honor God and draw people to Jesus. Man, that's awesome, and you've been doing it for a while. God has is, is really been consistent with the growth with your projects. Um, what else can we expect in the near future from you, SO, when we talk about the creativity that you've been laying down? Yeah, man, you could definitely expect more more concerts, uh, more music. You know, I've almost finished the album, so that will be out later on this year. Definitely, I'm excited just to, for people to hear it, because I, I don't like sitting on music at all. I just like to just give it to the people to listen to. Um, so, yeah, new music, hopefully more concerts, traveling around the world, sharing Jesus with people. Um, yeah, that's it, really. Yeah, for our viewers out there uh, with that, so um, where can, I know you're probably on iTunes, and uh, for our viewers, where can they get some of that good music you've been laying down with this gospel rap, sir? Yeah, man, so you can just iTunes, so it continues, and you see a guy, you know, levitating, like, you know, with a little cat, and <laughs> that'll, be, that'll be my album cover. Or you can go on um, my label's website, www.lampmode.com, uh, lampmode.com forward slash store, and you can buy a physical copy, and then you can get all the information about myself and the other artists. Well, man, when you're back in San Antonio, uh, look us up, Black Video News. I'm Keith Scott. I want to thank you. Jason, I want to thank SO for taking the time out. They just got in town. I uh, know, but I want to thank you, man, for yeah. taking the time out. Thank you for having us. You know what I mean? Look forward to um, seeing you guys at the concert tomorrow and all the people who are watching as well. Yeah, definitely, man. Be all right. Thank you, sir. You heard it first. This is Black Video News. Your host, Keith Scott of Black Trending, right here with SO. Peace.